We talked about assessment in our previous videos. Briefly describe the WH questions for the assessment. Who to assess, what to assess, why assess, when to assess, and how to assess. It was mentioned that when we do the assessment, we need to bear in mind that which level that we are assessing, what are the purpose of doing the assessment, how frequent should we do the assessment, and how the assessment should be carried out. Now let us proceed our discussions with the assessment for PEO program objectives. The purpose of the assessment is to establish graduate's career pathway aligned to qualifications acquired and intended educational objective attained. What does it mean? You know that PEO is meant for the graduates entering the industry for 3 to 5 years. We want to know whether our graduate can perform well in the industry whether they have the necessary technical skills to compete in the industry. If they can perform well in the working industry, their career prospect will be very positive. So ultimately, when we talk about PEO, we are looking into their career prospects. Now, the graduate's career prospect is not something that we can control. There are so many uncertainty there. It depends on the macroeconomics, the development within the countries. It depends on their competitors, the graduate from the other institutions. It also depends on themselves, their personal quality, as well as engineering knowledge and practical skills that they possess. All this will govern their career prospects. What we are doing now here is doing something that we can control. If we control the quality of the program, ensure that our students going through proper training program, they have been introduced and exposed with necessary knowledge in engineering, as well as essential practical skills. Theoretically, this will help them to increase their competency so that they are able to compete well within the job industry. As for the other uncertainty, such as the overall market, their competitors, those are something that beyond our control. Therefore, when it comes to the educations, in the context of the program, we focus on the technical skills and knowledge that we can offer to the students. If we control that well, the qualifications of the students, as recognized by us, proven that they have fulfilled the intended educational objective, shall bring positive implications to their career pathway. On basis of this, we will need to assess the correlations and the reliability of these correlations. Giving you an scenario, if the program is not in good quality, the graduate produced by the program theoretically have difficulty meeting the challenge in the industry. This will reduce their ability to compete with others and this shall bring some implications to their career pathway. Now, if we assess ourselves, finding that actually we are performing well within the program, but the general data tell us that our graduate cannot perform well when entering into the industry. That means there is misalignment in terms of what we perceive in terms of the quality of the program versus what is happening in the reality. In this case, something is wrong, we will have to look into the program and try to rectify this. It will be until to a state that now the qualifications awarded have really strong connections to their success in their career and that will be the ultimate goal. 
Now, when we talk about the PEO assessment, we are talking about three to five years after graduations. Three to five years means what? It means this is the duration to transform a fresh graduate or a young engineer into a senior engineer. This is the transition period for a fresh graduate to turn into an experienced engineer having the ability to carry full responsibility of an engineer. Now we are monitoring this transition period. Now when we talk about the assessment, there are indirect and direct measurements. The indirect measurements are normally related to the surveys. We have employer survey and alumni surveys. This shall give us two different perspectives. Alumni are the students who have graduated. That means we want to monitor their self-perceived value within that three to five years after graduations. How do they see themselves? Are they good enough? Are they confident enough to compete in the industry? Do they face any difficulties in facing the challenge within their job scopes? And so on so far. This gives us some good indications from the perspective of the graduates in terms of their ability to compete in the industry. Another perspective, it will be from the employer of those graduates. How do they see our graduates? The employer may have exposures to the graduate from the other institutions. There will be relative comparison between our graduates and the graduate from the other institutions. This gives us some good measurement, whether the quality of the program or the quality of the graduates is on par with the other institutions or not. We want to know the satisfactory levels of the employer and whether our graduate meets their demands and expectations as a young engineers. These two types of survey is considered indirect measurements due to the nature of the precise value. It is not something direct measurement. It is very subjective, very much dependent on the opinions of the person to do the survey. And it is not really based on the facts and figures. When we do this kind of survey, the outcome will give us some indicators in terms of the levels of achievement of our graduate as well as more valuable information in terms of the expectations from the industry. If we use the information well, we should be able to identify what are the exact needs of the industry. The second type of assessment it will be the direct assessment. This one will look into the data, facts and figures such as we want to get the professional membership data, graduate career data, and so on and so forth. For example, we want to determine the numbers of graduates registered as an engineer under the Board of Engineer Malaysia. We want to know how many of them, in terms of the percentage, are really practicing engineering jobs in line with the program that they are undertaking. We would like to observe their growth, probably in terms of their salary scales, from the time they enter the industry, versus after 3 to 5 years of working experience. All these data can also be compared with an average value, as acquired from the industry, for us to identify our status, whether it is above average or below average. The direct measurements involve solid data, but it doesn't mean that only direct measurements will give us sufficient information to the attainment status of the PEO. Because the data shows the status, 
but may not necessarily provide sufficient details in terms of the breadth and depth of the needs of the industry. For a more thorough analysis, probably a good plan in terms of the direct and indirect measurements will be helpful. This is about the PEO assessment. There is one more thing that you need to know about the PEO assessment. Is that you have 3 to 4 PEO for one program. You have to look into the statements of those PEO, read between the lines, what are the objectives of your programs. You will need to break down the statements into several components and design your assessment accordingly. Both the direct and indirect assessment will have to be designed specifically to assess the attainments of the respective PEOs. Taking this as an example, we have three PEOs here. Let's say now the first PEO here is to produce engineers with sufficient knowledge and skill in sync with appropriate attitude to success in positions in civil engineering and in the other fields they choose to pursue. If you look into the statements of that PEO, it seems that we are producing engineers and we want our graduate to have sufficient knowledge and skills, which at the same time having good attitudes and also to be able to success in the field of engineering and other fields that they are pursuing. Now you can look into the elements here. When you want to do the assessment for PEO1, you can consider the relevant measurements, which can be used to reflect the attainments of this. Let's say now your focus is on sufficient knowledge and skills. Probably you are looking into some indicators to show that the graduate have the relevant knowledge and skills. Or you want to look at their successful positions in the relevant practice. You should set some indicators designated for that. Now if you look at the statement here, there is one more thing about the attitude. Probably you could create some indicators reflecting the attitude. Now the indicator here needs to be something measurable. It should be custom designed in order to answer to the attainments of the respective POs. You can use a certain percentage to represent their attainments. But when it comes to the percentage here, the percentage must represent the majority. You cannot set the target like 10% and 20%. The reason being here is the 10% and 20% can easily be achieved in chance. You will have difficulty to prove the direct correlations between the contributions of your program and what is happening within the realities. In order for you to confident the strong correlations of the program towards what is happening in the reality, you need to find some indicators that allow you to have really high percentage for you to have high confidence levels. And the relevant indicators must be strongly correlated to the element that you want to assess. This is just some examples of the indicators. If you look at the indicator here, it may not be thorough enough. Having the two indicators focusing on two items here, I have a little lacking in terms of the attitudes part and also what if the students to choose to go for the other fields. Probably you would like to have some data on that as well. And then with that, you can choose the appropriate tools for you to do the measurement. Another comment on these indicators, it seems that it is very focusing on alumni survey. 
this is okay provided that the alumni survey is reliable enough. Now you will have to ask yourself whether do you need the inputs from the employer and do you need the data from the employer to cross-check and verify the findings as acquired from the alumni survey or do you have some other ways to acquire facts and figures to reflect the situations I'm not saying that you should do all the survey just to fulfill certain indicators it goes back to the principle that it should be done on the basis that the assessment should be just enough for good results in order to prevent bias we would like a good variety in terms of the assessment too and the purpose here is meant for verifications of your model of COPO and PEO now when we talk about variety in terms of the assessment tools preferably we are looking at different nature and if possible it should be mutually exclusive data set coming back to assessing this indicator you might want to consider any two of the assessment that can be used to assess the PEO if you use the employer survey to cross check with the alumni survey the data set are mutually exclusive this shall minimize the bias or you can choose the measurements of alumni survey versus certain indicative data in order to verify the reliability of the survey this one it will be of different nature this will be very much dependent on your wisdom in selecting good strategy to have enough assessment for good results same goes to the other indicators once you have identified the way you do the assessment consider optimizing the assessment in order to minimize your workload which at the same time helping you to acquire reliable data and high confidence level in terms of the outcomes now the principle here is that for you to do the assessment on certain PO you will need to first identify the indicators reflecting those PEOs and based on those indicators you have to custom design the assessment finding answers to those indicators in order to gauge the actual situations compare the result with the indicators for you to determine whether the respective PO is attained you can choose to do all the surveys and the data if you really want an extremely high confidence level very reliable results personally I feel that may not be necessary as long as you can prove your limited numbers of assessment can still yield you really good results very high levels of confidence that should be sufficient different programs from different institutions may do it differently you may also create your own ways to do this as long as you are able to do the assessments for the attainments of the PEO